The Cook, the Thief, His Wife, and Her Lover is a 1989 film written and directed by Peter Greenaway. English gangster Albert Spica has taken over a French restaurant. He gorges himself on food while his wife, Georgina, suffers through his abuse and neglect. Albert philosophizes, poorly, about how food relates to the human condition. He does this in between brutalizing both the staff and patrons of the restaurant. Georgina has an affair with a bookkeeper named Michael. Albert eventually discovers this and has Michael killed. Georgina, the cook, and the staff of the restaurant conspire against Albert and force the gangster to eat the corpse of Michael. As he does, Georgina murders him. What does Albert Spica want besides, superficially, food? There is this scene in Key Largo, a classic 1948 film directed by John Huston and starring Humphrey Bogart. Frank McCloud confronts notorious gangster Johnny Rocco. McCloud says he knows what men like Rocco want. Rocco, driven more by his passions and instincts than introspection, stumbles over his words when he tries to guess. McCloud says that what Rocco wants is more, and the gangster enthusiastically agrees. McCloud says that Rocco will never get enough. Then McCloud says that what he wants, instead, is a world with no Johnny Rocco. Albert Spica wants more. He wants to consume. His physical appetite reflects, rather, his desire for more for his life. He has so much that he has paradoxically become empty. He is wealthy and powerful enough that his life is now post-scarcity. He does not need anything, and when you don't need anything, you might suddenly want other things. This is a trait among, and common accusation about, the upper class. When all of your needs are met and you have nothing left to struggle for, this complacency causes someone to invent other things that they need, but they are really just things that they want. Desire becomes gluttony, and gluttony grows into decadence and then vulgarity. If the rich and powerful have everything, why are they not happy? Why, having security and access to the world's great pleasures, can they still be miserable? 17th century philosopher Blaise Pascal famously had a theory about this. When someone is no longer busy, they are alone with their thoughts and are forced to face the truth about their own existence, and sometimes that truth can be horrifying. Of this, he has said, The only thing that consoles us for our miseries is diversion, and yet it is the greatest of our miseries. I have discovered that all of the unhappiness of men arises from one single fact, that they cannot stay quietly in their own chamber. A man who has enough to live on, if he knew how to stay with pleasure at home, would not leave it to go to sea or to besiege a town. Albert Spiga has no true struggle in his life, but rather than trying to be happy with what he has, he seeks distractions, women, enterprise, and especially food. There are almost no scenes in the film in which Albert is alone. He is constantly surrounded by his underlings. When his wife disappears to go to the restroom, he chases after her. Albert cannot allow himself to be alone. There is a more socio-political reading of the film, though. This film was released in 1989 during the waning years of the Margaret Thatcher administration in the United Kingdom. Peter Greenaway, the director, is British. Thatcherism removed some of the government's economic regulations and focused more on controlling inflation rather than controlling unemployment. Albert feels almost like a gangster version of a Thatcherite, as well as the strong-arm, anti-intellectual politics that were becoming in vogue. Albert positions himself as an upper-crust socialite, but actually has trouble reading the French menu in his own restaurant and generally behaves in a careless, boorish manner. He admonishes Michael on multiple occasions for his audacity to bring a book into the restaurant. Albert represents this anti-intellectualism by stating that more people will read the graffiti in the bathroom than will ever read books. Spica considers his recognition of this to be its own intellectualism. The fact that he believes he has discovered what people really want is greater than what people could actually use. It's a kind of fool's intellectualism in which actual education and enlightenment are degraded under the mistaken belief that it is not intellectual after all. Men like Albert decry actual intellectual pursuits and position themselves as smarter than the well-educated in the same breath. It's embarrassing, but so common. The painting in the background of the dining room scenes is A Banquet of the Officers of St. George Civil Guard Company, created in 1616 by Dutch artist Frans Hals. 
The dignity of the officers gathered together contrast the vulgar party of Spica and his toadies. But to Albert Spica, they are the same because he does not understand the difference between having power and having class. Albert claims to be an artist himself, not being self-aware enough to know how laughable that is. He is vulgar and violent and never questions the morality of his actions. Of course, he surrounds himself with so many people and so many distractions that he obviously has never allowed himself any real introspection. People are as consumable as food to him. In the beginning of the film, he mocks an Asian person saying that he never cared for Chinese food. In another scene, he refers to quality in his food. And in another scene, he refers to quality in his associates much in the same way. The 1980s UK politics allegory may have been intentional or it may have been subconscious, but the politics of the film become far more overt when Albert denounces Michael's interest in the French Revolution that abolished the monarchy. Albert hates France's right to self-govern and instead eats their food. Albert references and praises the eating habits of Napoleon, Hitler, Mussolini, and perhaps most controversially in the same company, Winston Churchill. Food is a kind of weapon in the film. Albert force feeds books to Michael, for example. The food of the poor and the food of the rich show their priorities. The food of the poor is affordable and the food of the rich is a status symbol more than anything else. When Georgina forces Albert to make good on his word and eat the body of Michael, the gangster's eyes are bigger than his stomach. He has finally had enough. He can no longer have more. Hi everyone, if you like what I do, please click on the orange Patreon link below. That's how this show happens. It's also the only way to request an episode. Also, there are other benefits to pledging, so check it out. The information is on my Patreon page. I'll see you next week.